Hey, so I'm up in the barn and um, finishing up the uh, duct work. And what I want to show you is a lot of times when you're assembling duct work, and normally your various pieces can be held together with these screws. And they screws look like this. They're self-tapping. They work great. But sometimes there's a problem. And the problem happens when you have sometimes the inner piece is a little soft and you're drilling through and you'll self-tap and it'll go through the outer piece, but all it'll do the inner piece is just kind of crush it and push it in. And suddenly you don't have a, uh, you don't have an attachment point. The screw doesn't, isn't connected and it's pointless. Huh, kind of a pun there. So anyway, what I like to do is take a drill, the tiny little, tiny little bit and I build, drill a tiny tiny little pilot hole man this angle is crazy if you're watching this on video you're probably going to throw up from the insane angles all right here we go so just a oops I'm scratching because I missed my little dent I tapped it earlier there we go there it is so here we go oops Tiny little pilot hole, just like that. It's just tiny, tiny, tiny little pilot hole. You don't want a big pilot hole because they're self-tapping screws. And if you use a big pilot hole, you, <laughs> I was gonna say screw it up. You mess up the screw. So anyway, that's how you do it. Now I can screw this in just fine and it'll work perfectly. And I wanna talk to you about a couple of things uh, for the ventilation for, for the attic. So if you recall in an earlier video, I installed a fan here um, and I explained how the fan works. It's got outer vent doors that open to kind of keep rain and snow out. Um, however, you can get a thing with called a backdraft. Air can blow in even though you got those outer doors, air can still come in. And additionally, uh, bugs, particularly wasps and hornets, they, liked, they like getting into duct work. So what I've got, what I've installed, right here let's see if i can get this up so you can see the whole thing this this weird piece here you see a little pin there that's a hinge pin underneath there's another hinge pin right there right there so what this is is called a backdraft preventer and what it is is inside of this unit there's two uh half circles of aluminum uh, and they're spring-loaded and they're spring-loaded so that they stay open and then there's a like a, a Foam seal right around here underneath this bulge. There's a foam seal and they flap open and block this entire Or I guess, I guess flap closed and they block this entire vent. They fill fill the entire uh, 12 inch diameter tube and so nothing can get past them. They're sealed and Nothing can get in um, which is great. Stops backdrafts and stops bugs. Um, and then the theory is when the fan turns on, it draws enough air to open those, to open those up and air can flow through and it's great. Unfortunately, this fan that I bought, even though it draws enough air to open the outer vents, the, the spring loaded area is too strong, so it won't, won't open them. So I had to install another fan uh, it's a blower fan. It's down on that end. I'll talk about that later on, uh, but that's where we're at. So I've got the two fans. I've got this. And now what I want to do is talk about sealing a little bit. So you see all the little gaps here and here. And oh, let me come around. Very precariously balanced. And as I was turning around, uh, I fell down. So oops. So anyway, <clears throat> I want to talk about sealing. So you see the little gap here where the metal seam is. Now I've got the tape. Remember on the other video I showed that I was using the aluminum tape to seal there, or the steel tape, whatever it is, the metal tape. But all of these connections here and here and the entire way down, um, I could use that aluminum tape and it would be a good job and it would do a good job. But I wanna do the best job. And the best thing is not the aluminum tape even though I'll be using it there. The best thing is uh, a mesh tape, adhesive-backed mesh tape 
So this mesh tape will go around all these circles and then you get yourself some rubber-based or some water-based rubberized duct sealant. And this is basically really, really, really thick paint. And you apply it with a paintbrush or a, a stir stick, splat it on the stir stick, spread the paintbrush. You need a utility knife to cut this stuff. It does not tear and then some gloves. And basically you wrap the mesh tape around every seal and then you coat it with that with that gray uh, duct sealant and it seals it up. In addition to that, you'll notice there's a seam. All of these tubes are made of a single piece of steel that's rolled around and then seamed together. And this seam can actually uh, be a weak point, can leak or pop, um, even though it's all screwed in together. Like here, it can eventually pop. So there'll be a piece of that tape here and then some of that rubberized sealant We'll go there and I'll go down the entire way and get this entire thing sealed up nice and airtight so I don't get any any air leaks. Um, that way the heat doesn't, you know, leak out of the barn. Uh, so there you go. I'm going to get started on that and uh, I'll see you down on the other side or you'll see me on the other side. The ducting is sold in five foot lengths. And so um, basically the way I put it together is I would attach one, uh, put some strapping in to hold it in place, screw it in place to the previous one, and then go on to the next and just kind of slowly repeat it and the ducting kind of comes down and that's basically all it takes uh, to get it all installed. It's just a lot of balancing, a lot of sweating because it's really hot up in the attic and you just slowly screw it together with those sheet metal screws or those self-tapping screws like I said you make sure you strap it in down to the other end and uh, I've gotten all my taping done and I've been putting on the the duct sealant uh, chemical been painting that on uh, it's a messy messy filthy job just be advised um, and I told you I was going to talk about this fan down here so this fan here is a 1,475 CFM centrifugal fan, and it's attached directly to the top of the duct. And you'll see I've got the metal tape connecting it to the duct work there. And God, this is a crazy angle there. And the reason I'm using the metal tape to connect the fan to the duct work instead of this fiber tape with my sealant is because um, I'm kind of planning ahead. This is a this is an item that might go out at some point in the future. And if the fan goes out to replace it, all I'm going to need to do is cut the metal tape, pull the fan out, slap a new one in, and I'm good to go rather than having to cut through this stuff. Because once this stuff hardens, it's a freaking mess. Basically, like I said before, you, so there's, you can see some of the mesh tape and you just, you just paint it on, but it's like painting sort of a cross between mashed potatoes and Elmer's glue. It is nasty, it is sticky as hell, it gets on everything, but it adheres. And then once this is dry, I'll go back and do a double check and in a day or two I'll go back and see if I've missed anything. And if I have, I'll go ahead and touch that up. Here's some shots of that uh, fan that I installed just by itself so you can see how I put it in. It's held in with uh, lag bolts. Uh, I've got four of these lag bolts holding it into a piece of 2x8, locking it in place so that 2x8 is carrying the weight. And then I just connected it with uh, the adjustable ducting pieces. I had to cut one out to get it all to fit, put it all together. So it's all locked in place and uh, a lot of work, a lot of sweat, but it looks really nice and more importantly, it flows a lot of air. Here's a couple of quick shots of the little electrical box that I had to install for the fan. Remember, the fan has its own plug, so it could be easily replaced. So, um, my stuff is drying, fan is in, everything's in place. Let's talk a little bit about this. So, we look closely at this. Now, this barn, this ceiling will be filled with insulation. So that fan sealed, it hooks in there to a plug. If I need to replace it, it's not a big deal. Same with down there, that one down there is, uh, 
its seal is also this metal tape. So replacing either one of them is really not going to be that big of an issue if I need to replace one if one of them dies. I just spotted that I've missed a strap down there. Way, way down there. I got to put that strap on. So anyway, there's the fan. And uh, let's see if she works. Come on down the stairs and this is for the exterior and that's for the interior. Take a quick look. Ah, that bad boy is starting up. So let's head on out and verify that the, those flapper doors are open and that air is actually flowing out of the barn rather than the fan just spinning and making a lot of noise. So we come on outside and we'll uh, take a quick look and we look up there, right there, you can see those are open, that fan is spinning and the air is blowing out like crazy. So there we go, it's in place. Now, I need to address a couple of things before the keyboard warriors start. Um, when I was planning to put this vent in, I had a lot of people tell me, hey, why are you bothering to duct it? Because your roof up there, you've got those soffits and you've got a ridge vent. So just put the fan in and that'll suck all the stuff, the, the hot air or whatever out of the barn and blow it up and it'll just go out. You don't need to duct it. It's silly to duct it. Just stick a pipe in so your insulation works and you're fine. And I understand why people would want to go that route because it's easy and it's cheap. Um, but the truth is, for me, it's not the right way to go, and here's why. The ducting does a couple of things. Uh, first off, it ducts all the air out of the interior of the barn through the attic and outside. And that means any smells, oils, smoke, say I'm having a cigar with a buddy of mine, or we're running an engine, not forever, but you know, we've got this, the smells that are gonna happen in a speed shop. It's gonna take them and it's gonna suck them out. It's gonna pull them out. If I was just going into the attic, remember that insulation in the attic is, is blow in cellulose. That, those smells, those scents would get into and embed into the, the insulation and I'd have a really stinky barn. And you guys have been in them, you know. You know what, exactly what I'm talking about. You walk into someone's shop, someone's barn, and it freaking reeks, it smells like ass. That's one of the reasons. So the second thing is, as I talked about earlier with that flapper valve, um, it stops insects from coming in. Uh, if I just had the, the stuff venting out, um, Without the, the flapper valve, I could get insects into the barn, and I, I don't want insects in my barn. And thirdly, heat. So I said a couple of things, maybe, maybe there's three things. Heat, um, if it was just venting directly into the attic, rather than up through the pipe with the anti-backdraft valve and out the side, a lot, I would suffer a lot of heat loss from the inside of the barn. A lot of heat would just go right through that vent and right into the attic area and get sucked out through the ridge vent. Because I've got that that uh, anti-backdraft uh, piece in there and the closed doors on the outside, there's not going to be a whole lot of airflow inside of that ducting pipe, which means I'm not going to suffer heat loss. So those are my main reasons. And the final reason is, it's my goddamn barn. And um, if, if you feel that I've done it the wrong way, that's fine. You go build your barn your own way and uh, enjoy it. You'll have your own barn. It'll be built the way you like it. It'll be awesome. You'll have your vent that vents right into the into the attic and when you go out to work on a car in the winter you'll freeze your ass off and your barn will smell like it well your barn will smell like ass so anyway i don't know why i sound bitchy uh but i'm not i'm actually in a very good mood because i got my fan done um also if i ever put links in to for products and stuff like that or you see me recommend a particular product understand i'm recommending it or putting a link into it because i believe in it i'm not getting any kickback no one's giving any money i'm not getting any YouTube stuff for likes or clicks or subscriptions or any of that crap. I'm just doing these videos because I think people are interested, so I'm not making money on this. So, as always, thanks for watching.